So let's say you're lucky enough to know where there's a national forest, so you can try to make your first catch. Uh, you really don't need luck. You can find all the national forests online and get an idea of what you might catch there. Okay, so let's say you're lucky and find a good mentor, you know, a fishing coach, to help guide you to catch fish, especially the challenging ones, like trout. And what better way to learn about trout and trout fishing than with a fish biologist for a mentor, just like my friends did in Michigan. I think it's just up ahead. You probably think we're lost, right? No, we're not lost. We're just finding things about ourselves and how we fit into this natural world. Not only that, we're learning about stuff that can make our lives better. And yes, your lives better too. Any guesses what that might be? We're going trout fishing, and that includes a lot of hydrology, aquatic science, and the list goes on and on. And whether you're boy, girl, man, woman, young, or old, join us as we share the adventure and fun of fishing. Uh-oh, I heard one jump, come on. Fishing's pretty easy if you do your homework, but today we have a mentor. Okay, so what's the plan? Well, at this site, you could probably catch some brown trout and some rainbow trout. Further upstream, where it's a little narrower, is where you'd find some brook trout. Brook trout, that's the state fish. Why do they live up here and why do brown and rainbows live down here? Further upstream there's colder water and brook trout need colder water than the brown trout and the rainbow trout. And also it depends on what fish might be stocked in this system. We're lucky to have you to give us some pointers. Yeah, but how do other people get into trout fishing? There are also mentor programs and conservation clubs. Trout Unlimited is a great resource. And there's no shortage of places to fish on the forest. We have about 1,700 miles of river that you can fish for trout, salmon, or steelhead, and then 18,000 acres of lakes that you can do panfish, bass, pike fishing. So there's a lot of opportunities. Besides the Huron Manistee, which you're fishing today, there's also two forests in the UP that are part of the National Forest System. UP, I've heard they have really good trout fishing up there. I have a confession to make. We actually got a head start on how to trout fish. We went yeah. to the National Forest headquarters to find out a bunch about trout fishing. Hi, welcome to the Huron Manistee National Forest. How may I help you? We're trout anglers. And frankly, we need some answers. So what are you guys looking for? We want a secret place to fish. Yeah, somewhere where we can catch trout. Well, have I got a couple places for you to go look at. Well, here, let's look at a map. Wow, there's so many streams and rivers. My favorite place is along the Pine River here below Tippy Dam. Not only do you have trout in here, but the world's largest brown trout was actually caught in this river just below the Tippy Dam. Wow. And there's also salmon running. So you may even be able to catch a salmon if you don't capture a trout. Uh, you forgot something really important. Our secret spot. Well, if I show you it, it's not gonna be so secret anymore. Oh, we won't tell anyone. Oh, it's, it's a secret. secret. And if you can't make it into the Forest Service headquarters, there's a ton of information online. All this talk about trout fishing is fun and all, but I really, really want to go fishing. Can we go now, please? Come on, let's go. Sweet. The current is so strong up here. The key to good fishing is good habitat, and some of the streams in our area need a little assistance, so we work with partners to improve habitat for fish and other aquatic organisms. The important reason that we work with partners is because it allows us to accomplish more together. For instance, the data that we use to make management decisions is often collected by the Michigan DNR, 
and they check a lot of the rivers and figure out which species are in those rivers and then the different age and size classes they are to help make management decisions. So then they can determine how many fish can be caught in an area. So we work with state, federal, tribal, and non-government organizations as partners. And one of our big partners is Trout Unlimited. So we found this beaver dam and we thought it would be good structure and we just changed our bait. So but we haven't had any bites yet, so we're gonna go downstream. Come on. This is the kind of place you want to look for habitat-wise for a trout. It's got a nice deep hole. It's kind of swirling around. There's an eddy in here moving food and leaves. You want to give it a try? Do it. I caught my first ever rainbow trout. And it was so cool because I had never seen a fish that looked like that and I was really excited to catch it. It was really fun because of course it was with my dad and he loves the fish and I'm glad that I got to catch my first trout with him. Share a smile, share a laugh, share a moment. Share a smile, share a laugh, share a moment. So here's another good reason to fish this spot. So you can see it's kind of dark, it's a little bit deeper right there. And then see this kind of wet spot coming through the forest? Yeah. That's actually a seep. So there's cold water coming out of the ground. So there's a good chance somebody might be living in that hole. You've heard how the old saying goes. If at first you don't succeed, fish, fish again. Now, we didn't catch any fish the other day, but I'm determined to catch a trout. I'm here with a family friend, actually trout expert. So we're gonna catch some fish. So I know it seems like we're moving around a lot, but that's kind of the trick to fish in some of these small streams. You've got to be on the move, looking for shady spots where fish might be hanging out. Why do trout like shady spots? Well, trout don't like to be in the sun. It's hard for them to see. Plus, it's a lot cooler in the shady water, and they like cooler temperatures as opposed to warm temperatures. Yeah. Oh, Lindsay, this is like the perfect setup. We've got a whole series of nice whole logs that run across here. They kind of make these little what we call saddles. So the water runs over one, scours a little pocket, rolls over another one, scours a little pocket, and just keeps going. So you have all these nice little pockets of deep water. It's kind of fast, so any bugs or anything that are going to float downstream are going to come right at those trout. Hey, Linz, I got one. Coming. So, let's see, actually here, have him put your rod down or have you help me out, I'll go grab him. All right. Hold that one, and I'll slide down and grab him, see what we got here. So when you grab fish, it's really important to keep your hands wet. Look at that, nice little brown trout. Brown trout, yeah. Cool. Look how pretty they are. Yeah, those are Those awesome. red fins are gorgeous. Back he goes. Cool, we got one. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least we didn't get skunked. Now I gotta get one. Definitely. I got one. Nice. Good job. Here, you want me to help you get it? Oh, oh my gosh. So close. Ugh, that's not the kind of catch and release I was looking for. 